Hey, it's Melissa from Kiwi Banana and today I'm going to do a video on my slaughterhouse experience and I'll leave a link in the description box down below of the video I did of my dairy farm experience. This will be rather long, you may want to sit down with some food or you can watch it on double speed if you're watching on a computer, laptop. Unfortunately if you're watching on a smartphone they haven't brought out that sort of option yet. I might as well give you a bit of a background um, to the job that I was doing. And it was something that I did as like part-time when I was at school. So I also had another job and that was another part-time job. So this was this slaughterhouse job that I had was kind of like on top of that other job. And I'd do it um, in the holidays. And I wouldn't say I, I, I did the job for a very long time. And so also I should make it clear that there was no part where I actually had to touch any of the animals in my role um, as I was working there. However, I was allowed to see the whole process from the start to the finish and um, there was no like no hiding of anything that goes on. So yeah, so um, basically the start being that the, the animals would be in the pens or kept in, in the enclosure before they're being killed and the end being that their flesh would start to look a lot more like something that a supermarket um, butchery would sort of buy before they chopped it up into even smaller pieces. So yeah, so I um, should disclaim uh, before I start, the purpose of this video is not to name and shame any people or organisations. Uh, I've had um, friends and family that have worked in uh, slaughterhouses and other sort of meat industries I also currently have a friend who, you know, of course is, is not, you know, um, is not living the same philosophy as myself, who works at, um, who works in a fish, fish fact, you know, fish factory, and I've had family members and other friends that have worked in those as well. Um, so, but I haven't had much experience in those places myself, so I won't bother sharing it here. Uh, well, I'm not going to dedicate a whole video to it. So yeah, so let's get started. So I, a lot of the tasks I did were sort of things like laundry and, and tying up uh, bits of string and things that animals would uh, would hang from, etc, etc. But really the, the whole point of this video is just for people to be questioning, you know, what actually goes into the killing of animals to obtain meat on your plate. You know, you know, really thinking about that, and a lot of the time, a lot of people, I'm finding, are very quick to say, "Oh no, that doesn't happen," or "Oh no, that doesn't happen in New Zealand," or "Oh no, that doesn't happen very often." And I'm sorry to break it to you, but a lot of cruel things happen to animals in sort of houses, and I don't know where you think that they, where you get the idea that that they, that they are treated super nicely in sort of houses <sighs> but then again I kind of can see where you're coming from because it's, it's been marketed to you and it's again it's, it's bad business it's bad business it's bad e economics for allow to allow people to see what goes on obviously there is a countries around the world where you know it's everyone can see how the fish is killed and how the pigs killed and, and how all these animals are killed but here in Western countries, we tend to make it very much in closed doors and it could be illegal to, to film what goes on as well. So yeah, and um, so the place that I worked at was, they, they only did mainly three animals, which were the sheep, pig and cows. And that's just because, you know, if it's fish, they need different facilities and that's normally done in other places. Chickens, they need different facilities to, um, to kill chickens and kill birds for meat. So yeah, so um, with the, it was those three those three animals and uh, most, I mean, most people yeah, in the population in New Zealand would eat those sort of animals and not, not think twice about it. And if you ever question them about it, they tend to think, oh, you know, that, that doesn't happen to my animal, my animal was killed humanely. Before I get into what goes on with the animal, I also want to make it clear that, you know, these people that work in these places are not necessarily bad people. You know, you think about it, they're under a lot of stress, they've got to kill X amount of animals at X amount of time, and all 
also, not a lot of them actually love what they do. They might say they like their job and they don't really care, but if you ask many of them, if they had children, would they want their children to work in, those, in that same position that they're working on? And if they're on the line where they're actually killing animals and they're chopping them up, a lot of the time they'll tell you no, actually, I, I, you know, or they will refuse to answer your question. They'll say, no, I, I don't want my daughter, I don't want my son to be doing what I'm doing. And that's usually a good indicator of, you know, does someone actually really love their job? Anyway, moving on. And, um, oh, actually, I probably should mention that a lot of studies that they've done, I wouldn't say, I don't know if there's any studies being done on New Zealand, but a lot of the studies that have been done in some of the overseas countries have shown that slaughterhouse workers tend to suffer from a lot of um, mental illness and things like depression and addiction problems, so things like drug and alcohol problems. And uh, the, the abuse can stem into their own lives. Now, I'm not saying that the people that I know, my friends and family, are like this or anything like that. But I'm just saying a lot of these people that end up working in these places um, have either come from really troubled backgrounds or they kind of get into troubled backgrounds because of their work. It's really... Like, obviously, it's a physical job, like actual being on the, on the line, actually cutting up animals and killing them. But it's actually really emotionally taxing as well. It, you know, it, it, and I've, of course, it, you can start to numb to it. You can just kind of like, oh, well, this is what I'm doing. You know, this is the 50,000th sheep I've killed. You know, like you just, you can numb to it. And it's not a great thought to think about that, that people can numb to those that sort of action. Anyway, so what I'm going to get, basically what I really want to tell you is every single animal that I've seen being killed died in pain. Let's get this straight. Every single animal that is killed in the production of meat in slaughterhouses died in pain. Period. Like, let's just get that straight. And I don't want to hear anyone talking about, oh, but but plants have feelings, but animals don't. Look, don't even get me started on that. They died in pain. There's no if, but, what's about it. They die in pain. And then some people go, well, you know, they've got to be treated humanely. But what is humane slaughter? If I had your grandmother, and I was going to kill her so I could roast, um, roast her in the oven, or whatever, okay, I'm getting a bit graphic here, sorry. I don't want to kill your grandmother. What would be the most humane way to kill her? With her consent, possibly, is what most people would say. If she was dying and she was ill, possibly that would be the most humane way. So I guess you call it euthanasia. Would be the most humane way, some would argue, some would obviously argue not, is the most humane way to kill an animal is euthanasia. And, you know, people consent to that. Animals at not any point are consenting to the fact that they're going to be killed. And, you know, obviously you can argue, well, how can you get an animal to consent to that? Well, it's quite clear that they don't consent to that. I think that's a good enough indication. They don't want to be killed. Now, depending on the animal, will depend at what point they realise they're going to be killed. And they're all a lot more intelligent than what you think. And, you know, okay, let, let's start with the cows. The cows generally start to know once they've got a few animals in front of them, they're seeing, you know, their brothers, their sisters, their, their relatives, their friends, whatever, of their own species being killed. They will then start panicking and going, you know, I don't know what they're going. But they're probably, <laughs> they start panicking, they start jumping around, they start not wanting to be there at all. Sheep, very much the same. Actually, cows probably notice it before sheep. Sheep are not as stupid as people seem to think. They start knowing it as well, and they'll start jumping around, and they'll start acting like they don't want to be there either. Pigs? Pigs are, like, more intelligent than dogs. If we want to try and calculate in an intelligence way the tool that we use to calculate intelligence for human beings, pigs are more intelligent than dogs. They know, as soon as they friggin' get to their pen, that their, 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 their life is over. They are squealing. If you've ever heard the noises of cows, cows of pigs when when they're at the slaughterhouse like not even being killed like they're just in their pen it's it's actually quite upsetting like if it's the first time you've ever heard it you know I'd recommend getting hold of some sort of pig noises them squealing like that and just sit there with some headphones in and just listen to that like if that doesn't make you feel uncomfortable then I don't know maybe you want to get something looked at just a suggestion 
Anyway, I understand, look, some people are not going to be as compassionate towards these animals as, as, you know, some other people are. Me, you know, me at this point in time, I was still leading me. I was still thinking that it was okay. But hey, people can change. So yeah, every single one of those animals are like fighting for their lives to not be killed. They're, they're in the line of being killed and they're trying to get out. They're trying to, they're squashing each other. They're squirming. They're making all these noises. And like, if you think about a lot of these cows, especially cows, like they're really massive. Oh my God, they're so huge. I don't know if any of you guys have ever seen cows, but they're huge beings, especially males. The male, like the bulls, oh, the strength of them too, like some, depending on the breed. Oh, and some of these, some of these people working in these sort of houses, like, they're doing the best to try and get, you know, that many killed in, in X amount of time. And like, you know, they're, so they're often trying to have to get themselves in the pens with the cows, but they don't really want to do that. Because if you end up between a cow and metal pen poles, you're likely to be done. You know what I mean? Like, it's going to crush your bones or you're going to die. Or both will happen. You know what I mean? Like, they, they are fighting for their life to not be killed. Yeah, and that's basically... Basically, I mean, if you want to know how they killed this one, it was the um, the old bolt to the to the head. I mean, there was there was a person that worked there that killed like a hundred sheep without the electricity on. Just killed the sheep with the bolts to the head, but they don't always die. You know, even with the electricity on or off, they don't always die when they first get that shot. So when they're getting cut open. You know, when they get through the and they're getting covered, they're actually still alive. And some people might say, oh, it's just, it's just twitching, it's just, but it's not always just twitching. They actually are still alive. It's like, imagine it's someone trying to kill you, but then they also decide to cut you open. You know, they don't wait for you to die, they then decide to cut you open. It's just, the pain that these animals be going through is just horrendous. And of course, I'm not going to show any graphic footage in this video, that's not the whole point of it. It's about 12 minutes now. <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's, it's not the most comfortable video to make and it's not the most comfortable topic to talk about. I could probably go into more detail, but I don't know if it's actually really necessary to do so. And you know, hopefully as consumer preferences change, then these workers can get work in other places. Because they want to work just like you and I do. And they might not like what they do. And probably more often than not, they really actually don't like their job. And if they really sat down and thought about it, they'd probably find that a lot of what they're doing in their job is really affecting other parts of their life. You know, and the best thing we can do is not purchase it. You don't purchase meat, you're less likely to be contributing towards those workers and animals, of course, getting exploited. You know, but I, I, I I'll put that out there. I think slaughterhouse workers are exploited. Those people working on those those lines of actually killing the animals and chopping them up and taking their body parts out and are exploited. That yeah, I put it out there. I'm gonna say it, but I think they're exploited. And of course the animals are exploited as well. So yeah, let me know um, if you've learnt anything new today. Let me know if you want to critique anything that I said. Let me know if you want to ask me anything more about this you know leave it in the comment section down below I'm more than happy to discuss this like let's get a discussion going you know and uh, like if you do subscribe would be nice and I hope you've done something that makes you happy today see ya